This time on Outback Car Hunters. Hey Dave, I reckon I can see a van out here. An aerial search for cars reveals the craziest combi conversion ever. Its previous owner was Dr. Bloody Frankenstein. And an Outback barn find leads to a sporty Hollywood classic. This was the star of just about every sort of 1980s soap opera. It's two door, it's convertible, and it's resale red. Hello, <laughs> here we go. Western Australia, over a million square kilometres of scorched earth. One of the most inhospitable places on the planet. But the Aussie outback is full of treasure. Classic cars. Oh, look at that. This is the Holy Grail. Ah, <laughs> oh, let me in. And no rain means no rust. If this had been parked anywhere else in the world, it would be dissolved. I'm Dave. Slow down, you idiot. And that's G2. <laughs> We're a couple of car nuts who love finding rare motors and restoring them. Last time my backside was this close to the ground, I'd already fallen over. Now we're turning our passion into a business. We need this, Dave. Yeah, we've got to own this. So we're scouring the <laughs> outback for incredible farm wrecks. Holy moly. And amazing barn finds. That to me just screams movie star Mercedes. To bring back to life. Ha <laughs> ha. Transform. You are kidding. And sell on. Mate, you have got yourself a car. Yeah. Happy owner. Gives you the warm and fuzzies, don't it? <laughs>
not bad for preserving cars for decades. a little rose bush out the front. Wouldn't know you're in the middle of the desert, would you? Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, how are you guys? G'day, oh, g'day mate. How are you? Look, this is going to sound a bit weird. Um, we were told by a bloke back in Cal that you might have some uh, old cars you might want to sort of look at getting rid of. What, um, what sort of cars did they talk about? Well, it's, it's interesting, these stories that get around yeah, about. The, the bloke we spoke to didn't really know. Um, he had no real idea what you had. So th there is some cars out there. There's about there's probably three spots we could go to, but they're not um, they're not easy to get to. Mm -hmm. I've got friends of ours that live here with us. They run a helicopter business. So would you be interested in going up in the chopper to go and have a look at these? He would. <laughs> <laughs> That's going probably the easiest way to have a look. Just yeah, jump yeah, in yeah, the chopper sure. and well, go and have a quick look. I'm about to go up in the helicopter. That's yeah. pretty good. Well, we'll go to the helipad. Choppers. I don't do it. A chopper spends its entire operational life trying to tear itself to bits. The tail rotor of that is driven by a rubber belt, a bloody rubber band. Fundamentally, they're just a bad idea. How big's the property? Uh, it's about 500,000 acres. Right. So half half a million acres. That's bigger than some countries. Out here, there are huge distances to travel. So the cheapest and fastest way to get anywhere is by air. The station owners use choppers for mustering cattle, sheep, and for visiting the neighbours. And from up here, I can see the car graveyards where vehicles have been abandoned. Amongst the bones, I can see a shining diamond. Hey, Dave, I reckon I can see a van out here. It looks like uh, it might be one of our favourite coffees, mate. Well, Justin's just made nodding noises at me, so you might be right, mate. We'd better go and have a look. So you know of this vehicle? I do, yeah. yeah. It's a little distance from here, but you'll get there on a motorbike, I reckon, a bit easier. Yeah, OK. So I could organise a bike for you and get Darcy to show you how to get there, I reckon. I'm up for that. Yeah. Beauty. Justin's son, Darcy, he's rocking this awesome mullet. Right on. I'll follow yeah. you. Yeah, Sweet. Riding bikes out here, you've got to be a bit careful because there's some decent rabbit holes and decent rocks and um, open mine shafts. They're everywhere. That was bloody there great. That was terrific. I really enjoyed that. Darcy, where is this thing? Just cruise through the bush here. I think it's down this way. Yeah, all right. Sweet. Check that out. That's a Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Scorpion. Scorpion. <laughs> Plenty of cars break down or fall apart on these really remote roads. The farmers clear them from the roads so they can mine them for parts, which is why you get these outback car graveyards. Ah! Here we go. A Volkswagen Combi. Yeah, well, I knew it was it a Combi, a... but I didn't exactly know <laughs> what year and what engine number was on it. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't but... tell me it was a splitty. Well, I... <laughs> I mean, it used to be a splitty. What's going on with it? Who does this? No rear wheels here. It's got middle wheels. Middle wheels, yeah. Not only is it a combi in the bush, it's a split screen combi in the bush. This is the holy grail. For the life of me, I cannot figure out what this was used for. I can't work out why anyone would do this to a combi. It's, it's criminal. Someone has turned it into, into a, a trailer. It's, it's everybody's dream to find a split window combi in the bush, and the day I find one, it's, it's previous owner was Dr. Bloody Frankenstein. 
I love combis. They're an absolute icon. They're symbolic of freedom and good times and camping by the beach. And over the last 50 or 60 years, they've just become cool. Any 50s or 60s Volkswagen combi is pretty much a gold mine in a car. And the split windscreen combi, or splitties, are most desirable of all because they're older and they have a massive cool factor. People spend small fortunes modifying or restoring them. And even in the worst condition, these are every car collector's dream. So this is your cubby house? Yep. It's a good cubby yeah. house, eh? Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Were you in it when someone shot it? <laughs> no. Was that just how Mum used to call you for tea, was well, it? Yeah. She's you ready. Put, put one into Here the side go. of the cubby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I reckon it's a 61, judging oh, by the two 62. Tailors. 61. 62. 61. Yeah, who's what? owned a 61 Combi? Well, Hands up, everyone who's owned a 61 Combi. It's a 61. Missing a door. Where's the other door? I think me and my brothers, we hid it in the bush somewhere. I'm not sure where it is. But Help me out here. Yeah. Do you know where the other door is? I've got a This is idea. important yeah. stuff. Yeah, we need it. <laughs> we do um, need it. Yeah, well, we might need a few other things too. Yeah. So oh, there's no dashboard. Whatever you are. You know, this is this is shows you when cars were worth nothing, yeah. people thought nothing of doing this to them. That's right. And now they're valuable. You see them and you just go, what were they thinking? We know what it is, but we need to figure out what it can be. So it's got no motor. It's got no gearbox. It's got no front suspension. It's got no rear suspension. It's got no dashboard. It's got two wheels, which are in the wrong spot. So we need to find all these pieces. We need to reverse engineer this combi back to how it was 50 years ago when it left the factory. Most of the bones are still there. Hmm. You know what you do with bones? Feed them to a dog. Bury them. Normally it's rust that's the problem. Out here, dry as a bone. OK, not a problem. But it's everything else. Look at it. All it's left to do is everything. It's just nuts and bolts. All right, be it on your head. OK. How'd you go? Yeah, well, we found, uh, we found an old combi in the bush. Yeah. And GT's running around frothing at the mouth because he's found a combi in the scrub, you know? It's, it's, it's every boy's dream. On the other hand, it's been turned into a trailer. There's a lot of work to be done on this combi, so to make any money on it, we're going to have to get it for next to nothing. That combi's something that we're, um, we could do something with. That sort yep. of deserves to live again, so... Mm. Yep. yep. So the question is, um, what do you want for it? <laughs> well, I don't really know the value of those sorts of things, so... What, what do you guys reckon? I mean, I don't know. Are you open or, you know, two grand offer? Yeah. Oh, that'd be fine. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, if you're happy with that, mate. Oh, listen, I'm happy. Yeah. Market value is... Good on you. Yeah, <laughs> good on you. No worries, JJ. Luckily for us, Justin agrees to a nice, sharp price. So we're off and running on our first ever split-screen combi restoration. And thanks for your help, Darcy. Awesome, yeah, mate. And awesome. Um, I'll be around next week for some riding tips. <laughs> Jeez, Dave. This is a plane crash onto a train wreck. So we get the combi back to the workshop and in the cold light of day, it's like, what were we thinking? Generally, when you see something for the first time, you take an assessment of it. When you get it back home, it usually looks better than you remember. Not this one. To do a complete restoration on this is beyond us. Um, it's not beyond saving, it's not beyond someone else, but <laughs> we're not the guys to do that. Rebuilding a combi chassis to Volkswagen factory spec is not the kind of job GT and I are equipped to do in our workshop. Before we can figure out the best plan for this car, we need to call in a combi specialist. Jono. Call Jono. We're calling in a local bloke and he's a combi whisperer. In fact, he's been into Volkswagen since he was a little kid. This bloke is an expert when it comes to combi restorations. Jono. Hey. How you going? Good. 
What have you got here? Mate, what we got here is the eighth wonder of the engineering world, as you can see. <laughs> but someone's had a bit of a go at it. They have. They yeah. have. Ever seen one like this before? No, fortunately. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been in business for about 10 years, restoring, repairing zombies and beetles. We see a lot come through our shop. Some are good, most are bad. This is in the bad category. Yeah, there's, there's not a great deal here, is there? No, we're missing the steering column, um, the steering assembly, the front axle, the torsion beam. The chassis rails have been cut at the rear, the chassis forks. It's a bit of a mess. It is a bit of a mess. But we have got bullet holes. Yeah, oh, plenty of character. <laughs> yeah. For Tina, right, we'll have a look underneath, see what's there, what's not. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get any prettier under there. But, <laughs> I don't think. You know. so there's some, some parts missing under there that just don't grow on trees. We'll, we'll have to try and locate them and if we can't, then, yeah, they're in that canoe without a paddle. They've bolted on a, an A-frame at the front end, turned into a caravan, but we can, we can remove that. And there's, there's some bits left. Not much, but it's Not a bit much. To, cheap to work with, I suppose. Dave and GT, obviously, they know that these, the value of these cars are going up all the time. Hopefully, we can make it a roller for them and they can get what they need. I hope you know what you're biting off here. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll get it back to the workshop, get on the hoist, have a look, and we'll be in touch shortly, I'd say. Jono seems to think he can do something with this car, and I sincerely hope he can, because the bottom line is we couldn't leave this thing in the bush. You know, we're combi guys, we're Volkswagen guys. You see one in the scrub, you've got to bring it home. I'm tipping too, we're going to be chasing parts. Yeah, definitely. And you're going to make that our problem, right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I can't take them all on. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm happy to have a crack at just about any car, but I know through experience that this one is beyond us. It doesn't make business sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it back on its wheels, we're going to make it a roller, and then someone else can do all the beautiful stuff to it. With Jono turning our vandalised combi back into a four-wheeler, there should still be profit in it for us. And it frees us up to go and find another potential money spinner. So we're hitting the road again. This time, we're heading southeast where the grass is literally greener. Country like this is pretty fertile land, so there's a lot of rich farmers out here. Rich farmers mean a lot of nice cars. All we've heard is that there's a bloke living out here with a paddock full of cars. The only problem is, you can't see too far in any one direction. Well, I suppose we just keep driving until we find said paddock full of cars. Yeah, well, there, the you second there you go. There you go. Ah! Stuff everywhere over there. Yeah, there is too. Well, if it's oh, not. Oh, nice one. Look at that 60 series. Oh, okay. I think we're. Uh, There's some nice stuff here. I think we're on the right path, Dave. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, there'll be some early stuff. There's some late model stuff over there. A lot of it's pretty bashed up, too. Oh, all right. I'm not going to drive into the bloke's compound. <laughs> Unannounced. G'day. Yeah, hi, mate. Yep. Sorry to drop in unannounced, but uh, we couldn't help but see a paddock full of cars oh, out yeah. there. Yeah, and it's we all rubbish scrap. We did hear from a couple of blokes in town that you might be selling some cars or a car, so we thought we'd give, uh, we'd give you a try. But I mean, I, I think we're in the right place. Hey, if you want to come and have a look, and all right, uh, we'll take it from there. It's my no, kidding. Yeah. yeah, Glenn, how are you? Good. I'll show you what I've probably got cars you haven't seen. We soon discover that Mike's actually a tow truck driver, so that explains the sea of cars around his house. So what do you collect? Anything that's interesting that's, uh, that tells a bit of a story and, and nothing sort of mainstream, as no, you can... I can see that. <laughs> You've got quite a few toys here. This guy has got seriously eclectic taste. What's that over there? Cooper Jap. That's the same model that Sterling Moss begun in in, in the late, late 40s. Is that a Gagamobile? It certainly is. That's the 300 coupe. <laughs> Does that yeah. run? Yeah, it goes pretty well. It's a uh, two-stroke. Yeah. Uh, nothing exciting, but a fun car. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So, How about yeah. that? Mm. It, does go, it does go well. Is that a Morgan, one of those three-wheeled things? It certainly is. It's a Morgan Jap, 1934. A lot of us collect and play with cars we grew up with. In Australia, that's Holdens and Fords, but this guy's got Messerschmitts and Morgans. Cool. So what capacity would this one be? 1100cc, water-cooled. Wow, that's a big one. It certainly is. 
This is my favourite car. See, a lot of people think three wheelers, the single wheel should be at the front. No, it's, it's wrong, no, isn't it? It is wrong, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. the most this stable is, layer. This is the way it should be, yeah. yes. So this isn't for sale, but you might have something that is for sale. Probably the only thing I've got that doesn't fit my my plan would be a Mercedes. That, yeah, yeah, but you're welcome to have a look at that in case that uh, appeals to you. See, it mightn't fit your plan, but it might fit ours. <laughs> you never know, do you? Can we have a look? Certainly. Let's go. Okay. There we go, gentlemen. Here it is. Ah, the Mercedes SL. An R107. It's like Hollywood's come to the outback. This was the star of just about every sort of 1980s soap opera. It's two-door, it's convertible, and it's resale red. Hello. <laughs> Here we go. Bingo, a red Mercedes. I reckon this is what we've been looking for. In 1977, Mercedes-Benz created this SL Roadster, and it was a thing of beauty and class. The best feature of this open two-seater was its removable hardtop, as well as a fully retractable soft top. so it was the perfect car in any weather. A V8 engine made it sporty but luxurious. This car was so popular, you couldn't have an American TV show in the 70s or 80s without one of these playing a starring role. It appeared in Beverly Hills Cop, Dallas and American Gigolo. Mercedes made around 240,000 of these over 18 years and only a fraction of them still exist, which is why they are so collectible. This was the car when you kind of uh, got to the top of the corporate ladder. This is what you bought yourself to let all the peasants know. <laughs> this was um, made from like the early 70s to the late 80s. It was one of the longest running production cars that Mercedes did. Can we uh, have a look under the bonnet? Certainly can. So this is a... So this is a V8. Now these convertible Mercedes are just starting to hit their straps as really collectible. They came in a six cylinder and a V8 version and fortunately this one's the V8. These cars in their day were the glamour cars. They featured in TV series everywhere. Is it a yep. 350? 350, yep. The 5.6 litre V8 was an absolute monster. Absolute tarmac terror. But even the 350 went well. This one, on the other hand, ain't going to go too well, is it? Because Not the at the moment. Yeah, it's no. got a fuel. Yep. The injection's in bits. Yeah, that's the old Bosch K-Jet fuel injection. This is what they used before electronic fuel injection mm. became really popular. This fuel injection was pretty high-tech back in the mid-1970s, but now it's a bit of black magic. It's complicated, parts are missing, this could cost us a lot of money and a fair bit of time. What's a soft top like? A soft top's a bit shabby. It's, it, it is there under the back there. And so out of 10, what do you give the soft top for condition? Probably about a four. About <laughs> a four. It, need, it needs replacing. Yeah, OK. If we get this car, we'll have to address that if we're going to get anything like top dollar. This car could be a good car for us because no body work required. The paint's really good. It's a great shade of red. Always easy to sell a red car. To make any profit on this car, we need to get it for 10 grand or less. We've had a good look, and we reckon it's got a few issues. I mean, the wiring is pretty, pretty horrible. Rat's nest. Yeah. Mm. The injection's a bit of a worry. So, I guess, what are you asking for it? I was hoping on 14. Mm. <laughs> it got you, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts? Ah, uh, a little less than that. Go on, start him off. Oh, eight grand. Eight's a bit light. What about what about 13? See, I reckon 13's a bit heavy. These cars in good condition fetch mid-20s. You're going to have to get it for a lot less than that. A lot. Yeah, look, 13's, 13 doesn't give us enough wriggle room if we find anything wrong. No disrespect. And I'm not saying you're trying to, trying to stiff us here. But if we get into it and find something else wrong, 13's over the odds, mate. stumbled across a slice of Hollywood in a barn, GT and I are keen to buy this Mercedes sports car, but only at the right price. There must be, there must be some middle ground we can, we can work with. A mid-70s soft top Merc is a great barn find, but if there's anything wrong with this car, we have to build in a safety buffer. What about nine? If I get 10, I'll 
I'll walk away and deal done. We do 10? I reckon we can do 10. 10. Jeez. We can do 10. Good on you, mate. 10 it is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Beautiful. Yeah. If we can get it running and driving, it'll look a million bucks. And really, all we need to do is give it four wheels and tyres that match, reassemble the fuel injection, and replace the soft top. One problem out of my life, eh? Why not? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good on you. We've only just got back to the workshop when I get a call from an old contact of ours who's got wind of our business venture. He wants to know if we have any luxury car restorations on the go. GT. He's here. Paul's a car breaker. We've used him before and he has successfully moved on some of our vehicles. So we know he is a known quantity and he does get the job done. Paul. Hey boys, how are you? Mate, I reckon we've got something you might be interested in. Yeah, fantastic. I hope you'll be interested. Yeah. Okay, show us what you've got here. Righto, here we go. Uh, Mercedes SL by the look of that. Yeah, 350. Early 107 series. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I've got a client who's looking for one. Um, he's wanting something to surprise his wife with. Uh, it's for her birthday and it's in two weeks. Do you reckon that's something you guys could handle? Um, <laughs> yes. There's always a danger when you agree to a tight deadline that something's going to go wrong and you won't get it finished. But we will do everything we can. OK. Well, two weeks it is. I'll be back in two weeks and look forward to seeing the finished car. No worries. Bye. Great. <sighs> Two weeks. You've got 13 days and 23 hours left, and the clock's ticking. To be safe, we're sending this Merc to a European car specialist to fix the fuel injection system and check over the engine. But what this German beauty needs most is a cosmetic makeover, so GT and I can handle that. But first, we need to head over to Jono's workshop to check on our two-wheeler combi. I reckon that's ours. Jeez, I'm glad we spent up on the good stuff. <laughs> G'day. How's the patient? <laughs> what Dave and I have decided is that we're not going to restore this combi. We're going to get it back on its wheels with Jono's help, and then we can move it on to someone else and they can turn it into their dream combi. Combi freaks are prepared to spend an absolute fortune doing up these vans. But this is a split screen combi, the holy grail of all combis. I'm starting to think if we could do a full restoration, we might get up to 80 grand when we sell it. Shoot me down if I'm wrong. Mate, you're right. We could, but we decided on a plan, we're going to stick to the plan. I don't think we should fully restore this combi. It's going to cost way too much and there won't be any profit in it. When was the last time we actually stuck to a plan? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, what's next? Let's get the wheels off, get some more pieces off it and start putting it back together. It feels a bit odd taking the middle wheels off a combi. Normally they're at either end. GT, incoming. That didn't last. <laughs> they respond well to a nose job. <laughs> All right, before we get out of here, what else do we need to find for you? You'll need a steering box mm -hmm. and a steering wheel. Mm. Oh, GT, it's getting closer to being a real combi every minute. <laughs> Come on, let's go and get a steering box. Hey, All right, mate. That. Take it easy. Now listen, GT, while we're looking for a steering column, <gasps> we could still be looking for a motor and a wiring harness and all the door internals and all the glass and the steering columns and a windscreen wiper motor and the rest of the dashboard. The parts list for this combi is longer than my beard. But the more parts we can find, the more attractive it is as a project to the buyer, even if we don't fit them. And that means more money for us. John has given us a tip that there's an old boy called Frank who's a bit of a collector. Apparently he has a combi wreck in his backyard that he wants to get rid of, which suits us. And for once, this backyard isn't 500 k's away, it's just down the road. It's still been there for like, 30 or 40 years. Yeah, but an invitation to pick over a split screen combi, I'll take that any day. Yeah, that's it. That's something you don't knock back. Now, apparently there's no one home, because they don't live here anymore. Jeez. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> We've got permission. Boy, oh boy. Oh, Man, mate. There is some stuff here. This is oh. a lifetime's work. We are now entering serious junkyard territory. 
On the upside, I've had my tetanus shot, so I should be right. Yeah. Whoa, GT. Oh, you found the combi. I have. Look at that. <laughs> oh, dearie me. We're going to need a machete and a bulldozer to get to it. Oh my goodness. Nah, this is this is toast, Dave. What do you see? I'm looking at a dead double door combi. But what what can we salvage? We can definitely use the glass, mate. <laughs> Ta-da! Jeez. Got the door. Awesome. This absolutely breaks my little black heart, you know. Here I am, we can't save the patient, now we're chopping it up for donor bits. This is how surgeons must feel. <laughs> you should not be able to tear a car apart with your bare hands. This is what grown-ups do with cars Absolutely all the time. Absolutely killing me. Oh, there, there she goes. That's it, she's breaking in two. The roof has just collapsed. <sighs> Tearing an old combi to bits with my bare hands was not really on my list of things to do today. And while we've managed to find a few good parts, there's not enough here for a full restoration. If we can salvage either a few bits off this vehicle, they're so rare now that when we add them to our vehicle, it will greatly increase its value. Ta-da! There's a steering column here, mate. If we can unbolt it, it was once connected to the chassis. <laughs> yeah, I'd say in about 1971. I reckon that's loose, mate. Oh, sh Whoa. You right? Oh, man, that was scary. <laughs> Get rid of it. <laughs> Let's hope it dies so that others may live. <laughs> We've managed to pull a few hard-to-find parts to make the combi more appealing to a restorer. And now the pressure's on to get original parts for the Merc. This Mercedes convertible is really putting us to the test with the deadline that we've got. We need to find wheels, we need to find a soft top. These are not simple cars. They're very complicated and they take time. Yep, 31. Wish I had a garage like this. No bends or buckles or wobbles. No, mate, no, no. no. Good. I've managed to find some wheels and I'm picking them up from a collector. They're the original style wheels from the 1970s. Personal favourite of mine. They're going to give this car a big lift of originality. $200, yeah? Yeah. All right. And I hope they're going to a good home. They are. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much. We've ordered a brand new Repro soft top, but finding a single Mercedes 107 headlight in Australia at a decent price is turning into Mission Impossible. We could order it cheaper online from overseas, but not in our tight time frame. Oh, well, what have we got to do, Dave? We're going to spend 1100 bucks by the look of it. Ouch. OK. Done. Oh, I feel sick now. I'm out. We've spent two weeks waiting for these Mercedes parts and basically, time's up. Oh, one down, three to go. The sexy little roadster is back in our workshop with a revamped fuel injection system and other engine work that set us back five grand. Now, GT and I need to fit the wheels and the new soft top that's just arrived so that we can start making money on this Hollywood star. Right. You ever fitted one of these before? Nah, not one of these. Well, this is going to be fun then, isn't it? OK. Yeah, there right. we go. Right. Yeah, good luck with that. Oh, what a mess. What a god-awful mess. What a schmozzle. You have a crack at that, and I'll have a crack at these wheels, eh? Right, eh? Good on you. So what I'm doing is I've taken all the old hardware off the old roof and I've got to put the hardware back on the new roof so that it will go back on the car itself. And it's a little bit fiddly, to say the least. If we don't get this finished tonight, we ain't going to make the deadline. Just got to get that in at last little bit. I wasn't really watching the clock last night, but it was well after dark before we got out of here trying to get the soft top on this Mercedes. As usual, we're running right down to the wire. This is the day we're supposed to sell it. It's still not finished. Um, the wheels and tyres are on, that's great. Still got to fit the headlight. That's not so great, because I don't actually know how it goes into the car yet. Dave's been working on the soft top. Yeah, we really need to 
get on with it. Guess what? That's Paul. He's six minutes away. Yeah, I've got a headlight to do yet. Yeah, you have. But I need to know your thoughts on what do we need to get out of this? What did it cost us? We bought it for 10. What have we spent? At least another eight. So we need to be deep into the 20s, don't we? We do. To be uh, kind of happy. I reckon we should aim for 28. Yeah, OK, good. Get on with the headlight. I will. We're going to ask 28. Now, that sounds a bit greedy, but believe me, we've got business overheads to cover and we've got more cars to buy. So we need to keep the cash flow turning over. I'll go and uh, see if I can stall him off a bit. Paul! G'day. How are you? Oh, man. How's the family? Oh, all going well. Yeah? You guys? Yeah. Nah. Works good? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right. Come with me. Look forward to seeing you. We bought this car from a tow truck driver who basically wasn't interested in it. So we got really lucky and we got it for the right price. Ten. We can do ten. Then the spending started. We had to get the engine sorted out. Fuel injection was all over the place. The car had poor wheels on it, the wrong wheels. Uh, the soft top was crapola, so we had to replace that. That was that was an event in itself. And finally, you know, we ended up paying eleven hundred dollars, I think it was, for a, for a damn headlight. So this car has cost us a lot, and it, and it has been a journey. But we're pretty pleased with the result now. We're looking forward to it. There it is. Beautiful. As promised. How are you? It's going well. This is a bright red two-door Benz sports convertible. What an awesome birthday present. They've done a good job with the car. It looks really smart. Changing it to the correct wheels makes a world of difference to it. Um, and it's, it's come up pretty nice. Good to see you've got the right wheels on it. And the other thing, of course, was the hood. Let's yes. have a look at that. Yeah, sure. Let me show you that. Right. So, look at that. Brand new. Good. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'd better have a look at the rest of it. Be our Paint guest. works very nice. Body's good. That's good? Yep. OK. Excellent. Cool. Let's talk turkey. I, I'd like to start at 25 and see if that's enough to, to get you moving. It's a serious offer. Yeah. Hmm. We were thinking around the 32 mark. Really, 30 would top it out, and, and I think I need to offer a bit less for my client than that. Would 28,000 do it? I'll, I'll come down to 30, or we'll come down to 30. If we went to 29, and that's me coming up really as far as I think I can go with it, would 29,000 be enough to take the car away? I reckon we can do 29. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Dave and I wanted $28,000 for this car. We've just got 29, so that's a little bonus. It's a bit more in the kitty to get on to the next job. And really, I reckon everyone wins here. Paul gets his commission, his client gets a great car, and GT and I stroll away with a little bag of cash. Mate, fair to you. Yeah. I, ha I was praying uh, to whatever god I could think of that you were going to roll out of that garage. Because I thought... <laughs> on cue. <laughs> I, thought, I thought, if you don't turn up, we're going to look like... on the line. We're going to look uh. like complete dunces. All right, what's next? Combi day. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it looks like a combi. It's now got four wheels and they're in the right place. <laughs> now it's back on Volkswagen front suspension and the chassis's actually been repaired back to Volkswagen specification with a Volkswagen gearbox and Volkswagen rear suspension in it. And that's what makes this car a goer again. G'day. G'day, how are you? All right, how are you? Good. I, I think I'd buy it. Yeah? It's got a great vision. I can see it in purple. Yeah, yeah purple. Flowers. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Bags driving. There's <laughs> one in every crowd, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Couldn't resist. What's the one thing that's really cool about a combi? It's the smiley face, right? Yeah. And at the moment, this one's got two black eyes. Yes. It needs headlines. <laughs> The 
Roller Girl absolutely completes a combi. Uh, it's, it's the old surf thing, the tiki bar, it's Hawaii. We've got to have one. That's perfect. See, now that is what I was talking about. Happy combi. <laughs> Let's get it solved. This car has a much better sales potential now. It's on its wheels. We can move it on to someone else and they can do whatever they like with it. They can turn it into their dream combi. These parts we scrounge from Frank's yard will make some combi freak very happy. The combi's attracting some serious buyers online, which doesn't surprise me. Everybody loves a combi. We've just had a call from a young mechanic who does combi conversions and sells them on. And if he wants a combi with a few bullet holes in it, we might just have the vehicle for him. What do we got in this and what do we need to get out of it? It cost us $2,000. Yeah. And then what, five, eight, I think, is in yeah, it? Yeah, that rings a bell. Anything less than 10, we keep it. Yeah, pretty much. Because otherwise, we've just done a whole bunch of work for nothing. So All right, 10. 10. Here's your mate. Here he is. Pat. GT. Hey, Pat. GT. How hey. are you? Good. Dave. Dave. G'day, mate. Pleased to meet you. There it is. There. What do you know about combis? Enough to know this is a little rough. It's a project. <laughs> it sure is. Where's the rest of it? We don't want to make it too easy for you. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, to give you the skinny, it has got a front beam suspension now. Yeah. It has got rear suspension and okay. a gearbox yep. and all the spring plates. Yeah. Is this all you've got for parts? Have you got, like, have you got windows? There's glass underneath. Oh, yeah, cool. So what's going on here? Well, you know what the Australian bush is like. <laughs> we call it target practice. Right. If it moves, shoot it. If it doesn't move, shoot it too. So what are you asking? Well, you know, these are popular. They're on the up. Actually, we were thinking 15, but we know that's unrealistic. We're talking 13 grand, mate. Mm, 13, 13, 13. I've got the time to do it, so that's all good, but it's going to cost us probably about 30, I reckon. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I would have said at least. Yep. Look, mate, throw us an offer. Wait, eight. We're tearing up money at eight. We got to. We need. We need more than that. Look, twelve. Still eleven. Come on. Eleven, it is. Man. Well Thanks, bought, fellas. The split screen's really hard to find. I've been looking around for quite a while. You know, I mean, I've got a lot of work to do. But ultimately, sell it to a winery or a brewery or something like that. You know, I did one before that I sort of, you know, put taps in for a brewery and sort of rented that out for a while and then sold it. So there's lots you can do with them. I should have known when I lost the first 50 bucks playing two up that this combi was going to be a bit of a journey. We chased it right out into the middle of nowhere. It involved sending GT up in a helicopter, and that was just finding the thing. When we dragged this thing out of the outback, it was a caravan with a hokey chassis underneath. The wheels were in the wrong spot. It was, it was a wreck. We've converted it back to a combi. It's now got a front end, a rear end, a gearbox. It steers, it rolls. It's a perfect project. Really happy it's going to someone that actually realises what it is. Yeah. yeah. And can yeah. do it. Oh, well, you'll have to send us a photo. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Awesome. I love saving cars. I love dragging cars out of sheds and out of paddocks. I love resurrections, and this is a success story. <laughs> so all we're going to do is mount the trophy. No man cave would be complete. Beautiful. <laughs> that looks great. That will be looking down on us forever. <laughs>